Amén. The brain is a bow bent, the arrow of an idea flies to split the apple with reality into new configurations, dazzling shards and splinters, abstraction, no obstruction as great thinkers tinker, Shakespeare's cannon staggers, a rattling gatling of ideas to pepper the stratosphere. He didn't need a word processor, he was a word processor. <laughs> Could paint a world and people a universe using a goose quill filled with squid guts. Rifle through the bargain bins of history. It's remarkable what you'll find. What lush, luxuriant gardens flowered from Mozart's compost. What movements grew from the leavings of Fellini. The immaculate nose clippings of Walt Whitman. <laughs> Genius flowers through every cracked cobblestone in the town square of history and we are invited to pick those flowers. We are invited to harness our ideas to great historical horses, to bastardise, be bower birds, take another thought, smash it to smithereens and reconstruct it after our own means. George Stevenson, Logie Barr, James Watt, Greg Scott! An inventory of inventors, of logician, magicians who tore up the rules as they ran the neuron marathon. And what do these teachers teach us? They teach us to reach beyond our reaches, to learn to think, to think, to learn, to think beyond our means. To think a chain of thought that escaped that chain like Houdini, to leapfrog logic. I say Marx and Lenin, you think communism, but you'd be wrong. I say Marx and Lenin, and I think Groucho, and I think John. <laughs> Welcome to the house that ideas built, where inspiration inspires inspiration. Creativity feeds creativity, which is eternally hungry and burning and yearning for fresh meat. Begging the question like a dog does, bit of a mind screams, feed me! And I don't mean rissoles. I mean sushi with peanut butter. Ice cream with Vegemite. A banquet of gastronomic perversity. A jungle of twisted tendrils to battle stubborn delight. Don't just think outside the square. Think outside the rhombus, the hexagon, the trapezoid, the parallelogram. Think outside the square root of the universe as it expands like an accordion down a perpetual corridor. Yes, you are cordially invited to be inspired. So pull up a thought and make yourself at one with the idea of ideas in the house of the mind. In the house of the mind are many mansions. In this room, Madame Curie sings like Sinatra. Sinatra gets beamed by an apple. Carl Jung invents the lawnmower. Britney Spears swings from the chandeliers, wailing like Nina Simone, while Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, and Einstein are a barbershop quartet, singing the universe into being. <laughs> Einstein could explain science, but can science explain Einstein? <laughs> he couldn't tie his shoes, but he could peel back the lid of the universe like a chicken tin. Come on, come here! If necessity be the mother of invention, then let's all suckle her breast in public aboard this train of thought, this tangential bus. Plato drives. Freud cuddles his mother in the back. Picasso has tickets on himself and designs on you. All aboard! Yes! All are bored. Unless those synapses keep snapping, those tappets keep tapping. The house of the mind is an onion, in a riddle, in a mystery, in an enigma, in a Russian doll. The house of the mind is a metaphor for itself. The house of the mind is unhoovered. It has no maids or gardeners. It is ragged. It is messy. It is beautiful chaos, an exquisite disaster, an explosion in a paint factory. It is Jackson Pollock at prayer on a canvas, spattering his brains like nobody's business. Jack the Dripper, and work on his madman dollars, spilling semen and glass and blood and whiskey and paint to cast his soul like a great fractal fishnet. 
<laughs> fact. The world has only 360 degrees of separation. It is round and goes round and round like an O goes round, like a mouth goes round when it goes... Oh! <laughs> fact. A thousand Tony Abbotts typing on a thousand typewriters for a thousand years will eventually type the sound of a monkey coming. <laughs> Are you coming? Don't take the stairs, don't take the lift, don't take the literal, take the lateral to the floor of infinity. Open a door to the third eye, fire a Roman candle and maybe just score a bullseye. <laughs> but what if I fail? Fear of failure is fear of life itself, and we are invited to fail and fail prodigiously. Now, after all, how many different planet Earths did the universe botch up before finally getting it right? <laughs> how many scorched earths, punctured basketballs, deflated souffles ended up in the bin from the time the universe decided to pull the party popper off a big bang and begin the begin? <laughs> heroic failure brings heroic success, and if a whole scrap heap of crumpled paper can finally produce one iota of genius, one gem, one beautifully polished pearl, then it will have been worth it. Yes, T.S. Eliot, you can finally tell that poor plum bastard, J. Alfred Prufrock, that yes, it will have been worth it after all. After all, failure produces poetry, and also layman P-76s, which some people love dearly. Stunt for a thought? Well, your mind is elastic. Stretch it. It's a muscle. Exercise it. Take your brains for a walk around the block. While you're at it, check out Frank Lloyd Wright's new outhouse. Inside that outhouse is Johann Utzon building a matchstick opera house. Inside that matchstick opera house is Harry Seidler reciting Hamlet and being laughed at by Sir Christopher Wren for his poor taste in pipes. <laughs> Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha and Krishna walk into a bar. Jesus orders a rusty nail. Muhammad orders 76 Virgin Marys. Buddha puts Nirvana on the jukebox. Krishna plays along on a tambourine. A customer complains. The barman says, hey, I know these guys are a pain, but the prophets are great. <laughs> the first take. A butterfly flapped a fire, a whirlwind. You just got to keep drafting, editing, drafting, editing. If it's not perfect, start again. Try reversing the universe. Pass a needle through the eye of a camel. Rescue a building from a burning cat. Sink an iceberg with a Titanic. Let your car start you. Let breakfast eat you. Think of the potential beauty of that block of marble. Reshape that lump of wood to the place for Valdi. That sperm and egg can do mathematical calculus beyond the realms of wildest and probability. Think outside the Ikea catalogue. Think an Ikea wife, an Ikea cat, an Ikea dog. Wait to find a pyramid of Bedell on point and a series of Sydney opera houses in the Egyptian desert. From Edward de Bono to Danny Minogue, it was the best of minds, it was the worst of minds. But whatever your state of mind, what Dickens, just write the book, write the book, rewrite the book, write it again, eat your peas, do your homework, and then maybe if you've been really good, you can have your cake, eat it too, and still have enough left over to feed the world. <laughs> so celebrate the life cerebral, ride to the frontiers of the mind to find a beautiful, immaculate, empty cathedral just waiting, just waiting just waiting to be furnished with the best of you.